Good morning. I'm excited to be with you again to open this precious book, the Bible, to study again these wonderful truths that are here and wonderful, wonderful stories that God allows us to see in the Bible. Stories about Jesus Christ and the amazing things that Jesus did while here on the, on the earth. We have been looking for the last few weeks, really month or more, we have been looking at stories that happened with people who spent time at the feet of Jesus. And today we have a really wonderful story, one of my favorite stories in the Bible. Uh, it's about friends. How many of you have really, really good friends? A person who, when you were in trouble or you were facing a tough time, uh, a friend, a true friend, will come alongside with you and support you and help you and love you and encourage you. While maybe other people who had said before, oh, I'm your friend, they're gone. As soon as trouble comes or tough times come, uh, those people are gone. Uh, I'm really thankful. God has blessed us with some wonderful friends. It's funny, it's funny because this morning I was preparing and studying and looking at uh, the things I would talk and share with you. And one of my best friends just called me on the phone to tell me he was thinking about me. He was praying for me. That is a true friend. And today we're going to see a story about true friends and what they do. It's good to have friends, and I'm thankful. I think some of you who are watching today, you I would call my friends also. So I hope this will be a blessing to you today. Let's pray, and we're going to open our Bibles, and we'll study together. Heavenly Father, uh, we're thankful. Thankful for you being a friend to us and for Jesus Christ, friends with us and the Holy Spirit living inside of us, friends with us. We're thankful today for this story. And I pray that you will help as we open the Bible and look in here. Help us to find all of the answers for our lives uh, moving ahead. Help us to copy right behavior that we see here and stay away from wrong behavior we will see here today. Help us, we pray, in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right. Well, I want you to open your Bibles to Luke chapter 5. Luke chapter 5. And we are going to study today verses 17 through 21, 20, 21. Um, and uh, I hope it's going to be a blessing to you. Really, we are not going to cover this whole story. There is a lot more we could study but our time is going to be limited. So I'm going to encourage you to read the rest of this chapter for yourself and to find the truths that are here that will really be a blessing to you. Uh, but now today, Luke chapter 5. In Luke chapter 5, there's a very interesting story that's here. And I want to jump right in because there's so much to talk about here today. I told you this is one of my favorite stories and uh, there's a reason for that. Uh, there's some powerful truths that are here uh, in these verses that I don't want you to miss. And there's so many, so we need to get started. <clears throat> Beginning in, in Luke chapter 5, verse 17 is the first verse that I want you to see. And it sets for us the, the scene of what's happening in the life of Jesus Christ here. And it says, It came to pass... On a certain day, as he was teaching, that there were Pharisees. I've seen, I've seen different signs, uh, but today I'm going to sign Pharisee. Why? Because they were religious leaders. So we're going to use the sign uh, Pharisees today, okay? Just except for today. He says that uh, as, he, as he was teaching, there were Pharisees and doctors of the law sitting by, which were come out of every town of Galilee, Judea, 
uh, Jerusalem and the power of the Lord was present to heal them. Interesting. The story begins by explaining to us that Jesus was teaching. Imagine the picture. Jesus is inside a, a house. Now, we, we sign house, but in these days, the houses had flat uh, roof. And so they're inside, and there are people there that are sitting. They're sitting. They're listening to Jesus teach. And some of the people who are there are described here. They're Pharisees, doctors of the law, and they are sitting there around. <coughs> I imagine they had a good view. They were maybe in the front seats there. They were in the front, and they're sitting to hear Jesus teach. It's interesting to me that the description of this story does not begin with the main character of the story, but it talks about these people. And I want you to notice the description of these people, all right? There's two things here that it says about them. It says, first, they are sitting by. Means what? I can just imagine seeing the Pharisees, the religious leaders. By the way, did they like Jesus or were they against Jesus? Right. Most of the time, they were against Jesus. They didn't like, they didn't like Jesus at all. Why? Because Jesus was exposing their false teaching. They didn't like him. Maybe they were sitting there. I can imagine in my mind seeing the people, you know, the the Pharisees and the doctors of the law sitting. They were going to judge. They were going to try to trap Jesus in saying something wrong. But a very interesting phrase at the very end of the verse here, it says the power of the Lord was present to heal who? Them. Who is them? Well, it's here, the Pharisees and the doctors of the law. Uh, you understand something. I want you to catch this. This is very important. This is important to really the truth that we want to talk about today. Uh, they were sitting there. Were, were these people, were they blind? No. Were they crippled? No. Were they uh, deaf? No. Were they throwing up? No. But it says here, that God's power was present to heal them. What was their sickness? What were they sick from? What? Cancer? No. Sin. The same thing you and I are sick with our sin. These people, oh, they were, you know, they were, they were, fancy, proper, uh, religious people. They were leaders. People saw, oh, it's the Pharisee. They thought they were really good. They did, not, they did not need Jesus Christ to help them. They were there to trap Jesus. But Jesus' power was present to heal them of their sin sickness. By the way, good news. Jesus is present today to heal your and my sin sickness, and only Jesus can. With these men, they were religious leaders, but their religion could not forgive their sin. Only Jesus could, and Jesus was present there. That's what it means when it says that the power of the Lord was present uh, to heal them. The answer that God had sent for their and your and my sin sickness, the answer who? Jesus Christ was standing right there in front of these men. Let's, let's go on. Verse 18, it says, And behold, men, names, don't know. It just says, Men, men brought in a bed a man which was taken with palsy. I'm going to explain that. Palsy. I'll explain in a little bit. And they sought means to bring him, the man, in. 
and to lay him before him. So we get the picture here. There are some men. We know, uh, because we've, we've read the story, we know there's four men. And they are bringing one man, and that man is sick. He's physically sick. He has what is called here, brought in a man, taken with palsy. It's not a normal word that we use a lot. It simply means that his legs, his legs did not work. They didn't work. Uh, when he would try to stand, oh, they fell. He could, they didn't have strength. They didn't have the power that they needed for this man to stand. And so he's in a, he's in a bed. Uh, it's like a, um, you know, I don't know if you've seen uh, emergency people that use a stretcher. Do you know? When, and they'll carry. Uh, four, so the four men, one, 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 they were carrying the man in a bed. They wanted to get him. They wanted to lay him before Jesus Christ. They wanted to get their friend to meet Jesus Christ. Really? They wanted to take their friend to the feet of Jesus. He wanted them at the feet of Jesus. So you get the picture. Uh, these friends are true friends. Uh, the man in the bed is in trouble. He needs some help. He needs some friends. He needs some people who will come alongside in his trouble. And he had four. These four men. We don't know their names. Just men. That's all we know. They bring the man. And I want you to see the picture. Jesus is inside the house. And he's teaching and teaching. There seated there are the Pharisees, the doctors of the law. They're sitting there. You know, they're judging, trying to catch Jesus and something wrong. The other people are, oh, they love to hear Jesus teaching. What happened, the house became full with people very quickly. The door blocked because people were standing outside the door. The windows on the side of the house, there were people standing. And so the four friends, they show up. And what they find, it says, well, let's see the next verse. It says in verse 19, chapter 5, verse 19, it says here, it says, And when they, the four friends, when they could not find by what way they might bring him, him, the man, in, because of the multitude, they went up on the housetop, and they let him down through the tiling, with his couch, with his couch, into the midst before Jesus. I love this verse. So the men, they bring their friend. They're excited. Oh, we're going to, our friend will meet Jesus and Jesus will heal our friend. They were excited. And they bring him. And as they get near to the house, they say, oh, we got a problem. We're stuck. It's blocked, blocked, blocked. The doors, the windows. The, how, the house is full of people. We cannot get in. What are we going to... Ah, we'll quit. How many times have you quit when, it was, when times were tough? These four men decided, no, we're not going to quit. They, maybe they got a ladder and they climbed up with the man on the bed. They climbed up. They got him up on, on top of the roof. And they began to do what? It says here, through the tiling. Do you know what that means? It means they tore, they tore off the roof of the house. They, they, maybe, they tore it off. They tore it off. Can you imagine the picture inside the house? I can just see the Pharisees, the doctors of the law, they're sitting there, and they're dressed beautifully, and, and they're sitting there. And all of a sudden, they hear boom, 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 on the roof. Then, and then the people in the room, they, they start to see dirt coming from the ceiling. What's happening? All the eyes 
look up. Jesus' eyes look up. All of a sudden, through the roof, they can see the sky. Why? The men, the four men, are tearing, tearing off the roof. And they're making a big enough hole for them to lower their friend into the room. <clears throat> Dirt is coming down. Uh, things are, fa are falling down. People are moving out from on the floor. And Jesus is standing. By the way, the four friends were smart. They chose exactly the right place. Because the Bible tells us that they, they let down their friend in the midst. It means right in the middle. Right in the center of the room where Jesus is standing and teaching. Here comes this man and he comes down. All the eyes of the people in the room are on, on the man on the bed, coming down. All people's eyes were on the man, except for Jesus. I want you to see what happens. Uh, I could, by the way, I would love to have seen the Pharisees' faces. You know, the, the dirt, come, oh. They were, oh, they were not happy. I'm sure they were not happy. But here comes this man. All the eyes are on the man except for Jesus. I want you to see the next verse, verse 20. Would you read that? And when he saw their I want you to see Jesus is looking up at the four men. And when he saw their faith, he said unto the man, he said unto him, Man, thy sins be forgiven thee. Wow. Notice this. Jesus saw their faith. Now, it could have included the man on the bed, too. Maybe all five had the faith. But Jesus did not only see the person. He did not only see uh, legs, legs that did not work. He didn't just see the man on the stretcher. He didn't see the, the roof that had been destroyed. He saw faith. He saw faith in those four men that were up there. And possibly the fifth man on the bed, he saw their faith. By the way, can I say, Jesus had been looking into the eyes of the Pharisees, the doctors of the law. Do you think that Jesus saw faith in them? No. He saw doubt. He saw people who don't believe you. They saw a, Jesus saw a lack of faith in them, but in these four men and this man on the bed, he saw faith. And Jesus declared when he saw him, he said, thy sins be forgiven thee. Thy sins be forgiven thee. Hey, I heard Jesus say that to me before, not with a voice, but I've read on the pages of my Bible that on the day when I was six and I knelt and I begged Jesus Christ to forgive my sins, to come become my Savior. Why? Because I believed he died for me, was buried, and rose from the grave for me. And I asked, will you be my forgiveness, my Savior. And I heard Jesus, he touched my heart, Jim Braceland, thy sins have been forgiven thee. I hope you have heard that. I hope you have trusted Jesus Christ and you've received Christ for yourself as your Savior. Uh, this man in the bed, his sins were forgiven. Why? Because of the faith of those four. I think about that. By the way, the story does not finish here. I want you to see 
Uh, Jesus Christ saw the faith of the four and possibly the man as well, and he forgave the man's sins. But I want you to see the next verse. Verse 21. The Bible says, And the scribes and the Pharisees began to reason, saying, Who is this which speaketh blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Oh, they were so... Who? Don't miss. Don't miss, okay? The four friends, the four friends up there, they are rejoicing. Woo! Yes, yes, yes! The man on the bed, he's rejoicing. Yes, yes, yes! The Pharisees, the scribes, the doctors of the law, who is this man, Jesus, who thinks he can speak blasphemies? Who can forgive sins but God alone? You know, they're right. Only God can forgive sins, but God has chosen to forgive our sins through Jesus Christ. Now, I want you to see what an incredible story. This man, oh, by the way, uh, Jesus is not finished yet because later he will tell in verse 23, we don't have time to go, but, but verse 23, Jesus says to the man, Rise up, take up your bed, and walk. And the man does for the first time. His legs were healed, but more important, his sin problem was healed. It's harder to have sins forgiven than to get physical healing. And Jesus did both. But first, he saw the faith of those men. He forgave the sins of the man. Maybe the man had become uh, crippled because of his sin. Jesus forgave. And then he said, now, now you can walk again. And the man walked again. It's a beautiful story. But I want you to notice the four men that were up there. These men came. Uh, by the way, those four men did not heal their their friend on the bed. Jesus did. The four men did not do the miracle. They did the hard work of bringing their friend to meet Jesus Christ. They did not save their friend. Jesus did that. But they brought their friend to meet Jesus Christ. There are two truths in this story I think are important for you and I today. Two things that I think we really need to focus on and why God maybe put this story in our Bible. Number one, we need, we who are saved finished, we need to be good friends. What does a good friend do for his other friends? He brings those friends to meet Jesus Christ. Maybe you have, you've finished, say, finished yourself. You prayed, you prayed to receive Christ yourself. You said, I know I'm going to heaven. But you've been embarrassed to tell your friends not saved. You've been embarrassed. You don't, wanna, you don't want them to look at you in weird ways. So you have said, I'm not going to tell about Jesus, my heart not going to invite to church, not going to invite to come to special meetings, not going to invite to watch YouTube uh, and the uh, Bible teachers here, uh, good deaf preachers. I won't invite. Why? I don't want to be embarrassed. You are not a good friend. If that is you, you are not a good friend. A good friend will Destroy a, a roof if he needs to, to get a person to meet Jesus Christ. I want, them. I want to be a good friend. I want to say to you today, if you are a good friend to a person who has never trusted Christ, you will bring them to 
the place where they can meet Jesus Christ. You cannot save a person. Those four men could not heal their friend, but they did what they could. They brought their friend to meet Jesus Christ. That is, the, I think, the most important lesson here in this story. We need to bring our really good friends to meet Jesus Christ. Second, and, and this one goes back to the very first verse that we talked about. Uh, the story begins not with these people, but with the Pharisees and the doctors of the law sitting by. I want to tell you today, you could be, you are either like the four friends or you are like the Pharisees. Which are you? I don't want to copy the Pharisees. God's son uh, took care of the man who was sick, but the doctors of the law, the Pharisees themselves, they needed healing. They needed their sins to be forgiven, but they didn't see it, and they missed. They missed the opportunity to have their sins forgiven. I hope you will not. If you're watching today, you say, I have already received Christ myself. I'm saved, finished. Then responsibility is yours and mine to go and bring our friends to meet Jesus Christ, to bring them at the feet of Jesus. Jesus changed this man's life. Sins forgiven, legs healed. Jesus changed his life. Why? Because he came at the feet of Jesus. The Pharisees, they were there at the feet of Jesus too, but they missed. If you have been watching today and you say, uh, Jim, I have never trusted Christ myself, I want to encourage you. Don't, don't copy the Pharisees and come at the feet of Jesus and see Jesus' power to heal and leave without forgiveness. I pray you will trust Christ today. Let's pray. And as, as we do, I want to talk straight to you. If you have been putting off receiving Jesus Christ yourself and you're late, I wonder, will you pray with me today and receive Jesus Christ? The Bible says all of us are sinners and we need a Savior. The only person who can forgive our sins is Jesus Christ. Will you pray with me today? I hope you will. If you have never trusted Christ, please pray with me and say something like this. Jesus, I know I am a sinner. I understand my sin will block me, me from heaven. Today, I want Jesus to come into my heart and forgive my sin and heal my soul. I will trust Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection to forgive my sin. If you prayed with me and you were serious, you were serious about it, you prayed and you, you really meant it, I want to thank you for praying with me. I want to ask you, please, would you go to www.silentword.org slash saved and just fill in uh, that form that's there. We want to we give you, send you some things that will help you to know what do you do next. If you've finished saved already, Let's go look for a friend that we can bring to meet Jesus at his feet. Well, uh, next week, we're going to be talking about two more men. One is a Pharisee, and one is called a publican. Really, he's a tax collector. Uh, we're going to talk about them next week. Thank you for coming to watch. I will see you again next week.